Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Habitual Line Crosser, and uh, today, <laughs> you've probably seen this video by now. So, it is my goal to give you guys the information and let you make this decision for yourself. Uh, first off, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Aerial Resupply Coffee. The link in my bio gets you 10% off. They have flavors like 15W40, Moab, and my personal favorite, Firewatch. Remember, stay caffeinated, and it's not just another veteran-owned coffee company. It's the coffee company veterans have deserved all along, but it's okay. If you're a civilian, you can have some too. So let's go ahead and look at this video. I was sent uh, on on TikTok, and first off, I love I I love the caption, right? Bye bye, Patriot. Kinzal works better, right? I, the, <laughs> the whole thing. Um, this is obviously done by somebody who who kind of has a um, a narrative, right? Um, now I will tell you right now, there is no way that I can definitively give you all the variables, right? There's there's no given the information and the reference I have here. But what I can do is I can explain how some of these processes work so that way you can make the decisions for yourself. Um, there's going to be Russian fanboys in my comment section who say, well, who's this guy? He doesn't know what he's talking about. I, I learned about a Kinzel a week ago on Wikipedia and I know what I'm talking about. So let me go ahead and give you uh, my rap sheet a little bit, right? I've been an air defender since 2012. I enlisted in 2009 as a 19 kilo, reclassed in 2012. Um, I was the RSOP NCOIC in Korea, which was uh, reconnaissance, selection, and occupation of position. I then got back here to Fort Sill, kind of spun my wheels for a little while, but then I got thrown into the AMG crew chief spot. A and AMG is the antenna mass group on the Patriot system. I broke the 30 second double amdc record for the fastest plus four time i then was stuck in the van on crew three as the cso cso is a communication systems operator i quickly became the most e um well, the highest scoring communication systems operator in my battalion i then certified as a tca in nine days um that's just so you guys know tca is a tactical control assistant and that train up usually takes around six months i took the position in nine days and then three months after that nine day certification i became the highest scoring tca in my battalion the day i pinned staff sergeant i was thrown into a battery master uh master gunner position i was the battery trainer uh which is also an e7 position and then i trained my crews from start to finish and i had the first three crews in my battalion to pass table eight and i had the only three crews in my battalion who passed the spear spear stands for standard standardized patriot evaluation and assessment of readiness um it's one of the evaluations we have to go through i've written air battles i have fought air battles i have written documentation or doctrine on some of these things i have helped rewrite ttps i spent four years at the air missile defense test detachment i am the first soldier in history who's engaged and destroyed targets using the integrated air missile defense battle command system i did it in jan or excuse me december of 2019 and i currently teach patriot at the senior leader level so now that i am done slapping my resume across you russian fanboys faces let's go ahead and get into this So first couple of missiles you see fly off. They got a nice little arrow for us. Um, I'm telling you right now, from what I'm seeing right there, those are all coming from the same launcher. Um, the rate of fire is telling me that those are all from the same launcher. Now, keep in mind, when you fire the Patriot system, you just tell it what to kill, okay? Now, don't, don't freak out there. You, you will have operator oversight over everything. You can tell it not to kill something, too. Um, you just tell it what to kill. The system then through a myriad of background processes and pre-planned responses and things that we call FIDOC, which stands for firing doctrine, which is a series of selections and processes you make inside the system to get you the highest probability of kill or PK on a target. The goal with any air defense system is to have a higher PK than 0.9, which is 90%. The only system in the world that has a one PK, which is FAD, uh, American FAD, which is terminal high altitude area air defense. I, I might've, it might just be area defense. Um, they have had one shot in January of 2022 and one kill. They have the highest PK of any missile defense system in the world. Um, granted, they've only been used once, but we'll, we'll leave it at that. You don't tell it what missile to fire and when. You tell it to kill that target and it, through everything else you've put into the system, says, okay, I'm gonna fire this missile off of this launcher right at this second, and that is gonna give me the highest probability of kill on that threat. So anyone saying, like especially the, the one of the first things that I ran into with this video is they're firing more missiles than we fired targets. That's physically impossible. Okay. I can't say it's physically impossible because you can make a fake target in the system and shoot at it. But it takes a while. You have to override a bunch of shit 
And you're not going to do that in the middle of a fight. So the only way to fire Patriot is when it detects something or you fake it into thinking it's, it's detecting something. So they're in that entire argument falls apart. You can't fire it at nothing. I can't just say, I want my missile to go up into the air right here. You can't do it. It's physically impossible. The system will not let you do it. You have to hook a track. You have to fire it at something. Okay. So there's that. Let's continue. I, I love the intense music. Okay, right there, where you see the two missiles fire in close succession. That tells me that is two separate launchers. You cannot fire missiles that fast back to back off of the same launcher because you could barbecue the launcher <laughs> or the generator or other missiles. Like you just, there's there's a certain amount of space that has to be between each missile. This happens with all missile defense systems, the S-400. This even happens with HIMARS. HIMARS has six rockets that it can fire and you can empty that can in 26 seconds. So there's a little bit of space between each one of the rockets. Keep that in mind. All right, let's continue. Okay, that one that went low tells me that it was fired at a different style of target. So most ballistic missiles, ballistic missiles follow a ballistic trajectory, which means they're powered up until apogee and then they just kind of fall, right? Now the Kinzel is supposed to be powered on its terminal phase, which would make it a hypersonic, right? Um, we'll get into that here in a minute, but um, launch boost, apogee, separation, and terminal. That is the flight path of a ballistic missile. Whether it's ground launch, air launch, whatever, ballistic missiles follow launch boost, apogee, separation, terminal. That's, they all follow that. Every single one in existence, okay? Now, sometimes they do cool things, flippity doo -dahs. They they have MERV, early release submunition, excessive lateral acceleration, dive variation. There's there's all sorts of things that the world has done. So that's why when people are like, uh, hypersonics have to maneuver. Cool. The world has had those since the 1980s. Russian scuds have been able to maneuver in certain phases of their flight. The American fucking uh, Trident maneuvers in certain areas of its flight. It's not a new thing. It's, it's irritating when I hear people say that shit, but okay. So now we have at least two launchers in the game. Now the downside of this is, is because this is taken on like a 1997 Hey You Pikachu camera. I'm, I'm sorry. It's just really bad. Like it's, it's grainy. The aspect ratio is off. I can't, the depth perception isn't there. It's really hard to understand this. So, um, the average Patriot unit usually follows a primary target line, which is the PTL, right? You orient all your launchers, your radar, everything in one direction, right? Now, you can slew launchers left and right, you can slew the radar left and right, and you can uh, uh, take on things called a STL, or secondary target line. Um, from this viewpoint, I it's hard to tell what their PTL is. I don't know if it's to the right, I don't know if it's kind of like towards us, like I guess it would be like our, our five o'clock. It's hard to tell what the PTL is here. I also don't wanna say how, how the emplacement um, works, because that would give the Russian fanboys maybe an information on, on how far off they were. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of things here that are unclassed that are found in the dash 10 that I'm just not going to say because I don't want to make it easy for the bad guys. So let's go ahead and continue. Now we're getting some more launchers in the fight. Okay, judging by this, it looked like we had one, two, at least four launchers in the fight. Now, anyone who watches this and thinks that they're an expert, uh, I believe they're called Dunning-Kruger, but anyways, um, <laughs> and tells you they know exactly how many launchers this is, is full of shit. I'm telling you right now, they are absolutely full of shit. If they can tell you, if they're saying there, well, these are these type of missiles that are fired, you cannot tell from this position. You can't. It's physically fucking impossible. Okay, I can't tell you what type of interceptors these are. I don't know what type of interceptors they are. Okay, um, but there's so much misinformation out there about this, about this stupid, stupid video that doesn't really give you much information. They're like, oh, those are all Pac-3 MSEs. The Ukrainians didn't get MSEs because MSEs provide no fucking extra ability for them. An MSE is a missile segment enhancement missile. Okay, and it is designed to bridge the gap between Thad and Patriot because Thad can only shoot so low and Patriot can only shoot so high. MSE missiles bridge that gap. If you don't have Thad, there is no fucking gap. Jesus Christ. There was a lady on Twitter. I got I, I got tagged or not tagged because I don't do Twitter, but like someone sent me a Twitter and this woman was going, it was like an 11 part tweet. And she's like, this is a pack three CRI. Bullshit. Bull fucking shit. 
I could go right now. I know a master gunner who was a 14 tango. And if I walked him over to two canisters and one of them was a pack three and the other one was a pack three CRI, there is no physical way aside from the data plate to tell the difference between those two types of missiles. Even if they flew out, there is no way to tell the fucking difference. The difference CRI stands for cost reduction initiative. Some of the guts is cheaper in a CRI than it is in a regular pack three. That's all it is. That is the only fucking difference. All the fucking like the dude on, uh, what is that? The Zohan, Sony Guts. Like, that's the only difference, is the Guts are a little bit different. Uh, so, all right, let's continue. Now she's putting in some work. It's, it's funny when I see this, right? Because I've... I've trained people on this. Uh, this is about, this is a spicy ABML-5. Now, what is an ABML-5? ABML stands for Air Battle Management Level 5, which is our basic gunnery certification. Yes, I said that out loud. Basic gunnery certification. I've only seen this in simulation. I've never seen a Patriot system work this hard. I've never seen it. But this is a basic level air battle. That's what this is. This is basic. Um, we have intermediate and advanced, which is ABML-11. Uh, and then ABML 16. So um, I have written ABML 5s, I have written ABML 11s, and I have written ABML 16s. So this is kind of a spicy ABML 5. Uh, this is a less complex attack than you would deal with uh, fighting the United States. If the United States was firing at you, there would be a lot more targets thrown at this system. Um, but for obvious reasons, there isn't in this situation. So um, yeah, uh, this uh, the system's working hard. I've, I'll be honest with you. I never have seen a Patriot system fight this hard in real life. I've seen it in simulations. I've ran the air battles. I've created the air battles, but I've never seen it in real life. So this is kind of cool to me because I, I know what my system can do. Uh, so you guys are just finding out what air defenders have known for quite some time uh, about our system. So uh, let's see. Okay, so this video right here, I can already tell, is designed to be intentionally deceptive. So they were panned in. You see the, the building right there with the red lights on it. You saw a majority of the missiles coming from behind the building that is to the left of that. That is where the majority of the missiles were coming from. Maybe a little bit further left to the next building over, but not very far, okay? Again, we don't know how far away this system is. I have no idea. There is a minimum tolerance that you can have your launchers away from each other. People are like, well, what if they put them all right on top of each other? No, you can't do that. There's a backblast on a Patriot launcher. Now, the S-400 doesn't have to deal with this because the S-400 uses cold gas generators, which is similar to the VLS for like the standard missile six inside the, um, the Aegis. So cold gas generator fires the missile out, the rocket motor kicks on, and it takes off. That's the way the S-400 works. That's the way the SM-6 works on the Aegis. But Patriot is initial rocket motor boom and out. So there is a lot of thrust and heat coming out the back of those things. So you need to have... A, I'm not going to tell you how far, <laughs> but a certain level of dispersion from uh, between launchers or else you're going to barbecue your other launchers. The same goes for the radar. You have to be a certain amount of dis distance from the radar. There is a radiation hazard zone from the radar. It's, it's not bad. I mean, it just, you taste pennies and it feels like every cell in your body is dancing. Yeah, I've been irradiated a few times. And then you only have girls. That's the Patriot curse, by the way. Uh, if you get irradiated by the Patriot radar, you will have nothing but girls. Um, you will never have any boys for some reason. I don't know. It's the Patriot curse. That's what we call it. Anyone stating that, oh, it's all it's all grouped together. It's, it's easy to hit. No, it's not. I assure you. Um, now, when we're saying how far away it can be in local configuration, in local configuration, because there's local RL1, RL3. Uh, and there's a bunch of different ways to do these things in local configuration the length of the uh the fiber cables running from the ecs to the launchers is 1.2 kilometers that's how long those those fiber cables are um you can have them further than that in local configuration but you just won't have uh fiber optic connection um you'll just have radio connection so keep that in mind okay uh again with this video it's so hard to tell where things are at uh, aside from what they want you to see so now that we've panned out this is their big coup de gras, right? So let's see. Okay, so we see an explosion. We do. We see an explosion, um, and it says it's the first hit. Now, now here's the thing. This is why it's so funny to watch Ruskies contradict themselves. OK, 
Okay, so your Kinzel. Terminal hypersonic, right? Hypersonic in the terminal phase, which would mean that it is plasma stealth, right? 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 Plasma lights up like the sun, almost like it's the same shit that the fucking sun is made out of. Look, I don't, I don't know how true that is. I just know that there's plasma in the sun, so we're going to go with that. You can visibly, like, see plasma on a plasma stealth object. And I don't like using plasma stealth because plasma stealth hasn't existed for years. If you're using a phased array radar, plasma stealth doesn't exist to you. Um, everybody can see through plasma stealth now. Okay, that's why no one banks on it. No one's like, oh, if I make something fast enough, no one can see it. No, if that was as powerful as, as you think it is, the US would have nothing but objects that go plasma stealth, okay? So, Jesus. Everybody's radar. The Patriot, the fucking Tippy 2, the, the Spy 1 or Spy 6 from fucking Aegis, the, the S400 radars, like everybody can see through plasma stealth. It's not new. It's not a new thing. So let's just go with that. So we see this first blast. Keep in mind that blast was nowhere near where the missiles are being fired from. It could be a couple of different things, right? So we didn't see a plasma trail going in. So it's obviously not a Kinzel or your Kinzel's not capable of going plasma stealth. So which one is it? Is your Kinzel a piece of shit that just managed to somehow get through? Or is it not a Kinzel? because you lied about your capability. Like, I, I don't know where we're at here, right? So it's it's such a contradiction. So we see this blast, which was nowhere near everything else. Does that mean that the system wasn't hit? No, that could have been a radar. That could have been ECS. That could have been an EPP. That could have been anything under the sun, right? And the reason why this is such a big deal is because it's right at the end of the fight. And that's, what, that's why the Russian guys, fanboys, are holding on to this. Because you see no more missiles fired afterwards. If this blast had happened, and then they engaged something again, you would have no ground to stand on. Having seen this firsthand and exactly what happened, it was $5,000. You need four tools to fix it, and it takes about an hour. I can't tell you. I can't show you. I can't explain any more than that. But you need a metric 24. You need a flathead screwdriver. You need a set of channel locks and a forklift. Take about an hour to fix. 20 minutes if you're fast. That's it. And I can tell you firsthand that I don't know if it was debris or an actual blast. I have no idea. I saw what happened. I have no clue. But the system kept running. That's how little damage it was. The system kept running and they didn't realize anything had taken a hit until the sun came up. So keep that in mind. All right. So there was that. Uh, so there's the, the first hit of your, your Kinzal. Jesus Christ. Let's see the second hit. He just sees a little boop. Like, way off in the distance, they're like, that was the second hit. That was it. I was, that was the one. That that guy, that was, that was the kill shot. That was the, that missile showed up, knocked on the door of the ECS and said, I'm here, I'm here to kill you on behalf of Vladimir Putin. That's the dumbest shit. God, man, you, you idiots can't believe that shit. You really can't. Like, you, you cannot believe that shit. Okay, let's fucking continue. And I guess that's it. There's there's nothing else. They just have intense music. There there there's nothing else. So <laughs> you know what's crazy is when the Patriot system gets hit, we see a grainy video of a flash in the distance. That's what we get. But when the S four hundred is hit, we get to see a shredded fucking command whatever vehicle uh, that was just rocked by Gimlers. Gimler's is the, uh, the the alternate warhead. It's like 161,000 tungsten BBs, and it spreads out over like 50 meters, and it just fucks shit up. Um, so I think it's really funny, right? Um, I will never lie and say that the Patriot system is infallible. I'm, I won't. It, it's that would be dumb to say that. Uh, when Russians say that the S-400 is invincible, I find that a very dumb presumption. And you are banking on that system not failing, and that is putting all your eggs in one basket. And historically, that is not a good fucking idea. Because the only people saying the Patriot system is invincible are Russian fanboys. You said it was invincible. No, no. I've never said the system was fucking invincible. But I will tell you right now, for all because I guarantee there's Russian fanboys in my comment section who are like, oh, we got to get as much information as we can and get it back to, to daddy poot poot. Whatever. Um, you want to know the easiest way? Here, I'll tell you. Easiest way to defeat the Patriot system. Walk up and throw a grenade inside the radar. That's going to be your best bet. 
I know what the system's capable of. I know how to adjust the settings inside the system. I know how to deal with things. Everything that you, an individual who, who doesn't really know about missile defense, well, what if insert whatever, right? Well, what if it maneuvers? What if it does this? What if it does this? What if it, it opens up early, like an early release submunition? Everything you can think of, there is a way to combat with the system. Now, its level of effectiveness is entirely subjective, but the system is good. This version is an older version. We have newer versions. We have much newer versions. This is, I mean, it's not an older version. It's, it's okay. I mean, it would, it, it, it does okay. Um, it's, it's a pretty good version because that happened on the 18th, on the 18th of May. And since the 18th of May, it is now three June. The system has again been in three more fights. And the system has again fought three more fights. So I, I find the entire presumption of this idea a little bit idiotic. Now, there's going to be people that say that I don't have enough information and I'm not conclusive. This video was never meant to be conclusive. I'm giving you the information based off of what I see in the video. And of course, juggling what I can say versus what I'm not supposed to say. Um, so I want to give you as much information as I can about this system and about how it is employed. So that way, when you see videos like this and people make these bold face lies, I would say it's a claim, but it's just a lie. Like there's no, there's, it's just a lie. Like I, it's so frustrating. Like this is the first time in my military career that I've like looked on the internet and seen people just bold face lying about something that I have dedicated majority of my adult life to. If Patriot was a school, I would have a PhD. Now, nah, probably a master's. PhD is more like Top Guns, Master Gunners thing. I'm not a Master Gunner. Um, I've been told repeatedly I need to go to the school, and I've been in Master Gunner positions for five years, but yeah, that's what it, it is what it is. Um, <laughs> so I just, I don't get it. It doesn't make any damn sense. Um, this video is inconclusive at best. It's a lie at best. Um... The person who posted it is obviously very biased one way and doesn't care about the facts. If the facts had proven that the system had taken a hit, I would have told you that the system took a hit. This is an inconclusive video that is their big claim to fame from like somebody's 1997 Hey You Pikachu camera. This is dumb. This is bad and they should feel bad. So, <laughs> on that note, <sighs> As always, do not give in to the 22 a day. Every single one of you are amazing, and I will see you guys right here next time. Play me out.